Welcome to the VMR and AWS update show, the April 2023 edition. On the update show, we bring you up to speed with new releases and features on everything VMware and AWS related. We'll cover jointly engineered services such as VMware Cloud and AWS, which is the fastest and lowest risk path to get your VMware workloads into the AWS Cloud. And we'll be covering additional AWS and VMware services which enhance the VMware Cloud experience, such as VMware Cloud Disaster Recovery, VMware HCX, and AWS services such as AWS Backup and Amazon FSx. Plus, we'll let you know about any recently released blog articles, reference architectures, and customer case studies. Each show will then select a few items from the list of updates, and with our guests, we'll dive into them a little deeper. I'm Chris Porter, and with me is my co-host, Michael Carr. G'day, Michael. Hey, Chris. How are you, mate? I'm good. Wearing a particularly interesting T-shirt there. Yes, I'm rocking the AWS SheBuild swag today, a great community uh, in AWS designed to enhance the experience of, of females in the tech industry. Um, got a lot to cover on today's show. Uh, we're going to be bringing everyone up to date with what's been happening around the service. In particular, we're going to be diving into our uh, DR, so the AWS backup solution changes, and our VMware Cloud Sizer that's run by VMware. We've got Karthik joining us from our EC2 team over in the States to run us through the details around AWS backup. And with all the updates that we've made recently around the uh, i4i instance, as well as our new uh, FSx for, for NetApp ONTAP, we've got Glenn Sizemore from VMware joining us to talk about the enhancements to the VMware Cloud Sizer tool. Um, that's going to be your first step to understanding and sizing your VMware Cloud on AWS uh, environment. So lots of awesomeness to walk through again. Let's get into it. For this month, we have updates covering a number of different services. Let's start with VMware Cloud on AWS. So Windows 11 support is now generally available in VMware Cloud and AWS, and that's made possible with support for adding VTPM to virtual machines, which is also now generally available. VTPMs can be added to virtual machines running Windows Server 2008 and later, Windows 7 and later, and Linux. We've also seen updates to the VMware Cloud Sizer, which has been updated to version 5.2.1. That's a minor release that includes a number of improvements and fixes and builds upon the 5.2 release from January. And we'll be covering the Sizer and those updates in more depth later on. Regarding AWS services, we've seen some improvements to AWS Backup um, related to improvements in the way that incremental backups are run and multiple uh, NIC support for the Backup Gateway. And then for VMware services, we've seen updates for VMware Cloud Disaster Recovery in that VCDR now supports protecting virtual machines running on VMware Cloud Flex Storage and Amazon FSx for NetApp ONTAP data stores, although the recovery SDC must be in a separate region. And that about wraps up the updates for this month. One of the services we've seen some updates to this past month related to VMware and AWS is to AWS Backup. And joining us today is Karthik, who we're excited to have on the show to talk about those, those updates. Thank you for joining us, Karthik. Well, thank you for inviting me. Uh, I'm excited to be here as well. Uh, great. So for those who may be unfamiliar with AWS Backup, can you provide an overview of the service and perhaps drill into how AWS Backup can be used to protect VMware virtual machines as well? Sure, let's do that. Um, so AWS Backup uh, is a managed service. It's a policy-based managed service which was launched in 2019. And from 2019, we have added a lot of services uh, uh, which AWS Backup supports, which spans across compute, databases, and also storage, right? Um, so during our reInvent 2021, we launched AWS backup support for uh, VMware workloads, which also includes VMware Cloud on AWS. So with VMware Cloud on AWS support for uh, from AWS backup, uh, you can actually use the same policy that you use with your uh, native AWS service workloads and you can have the same policy attached to the VMware Cloud on AWS virtual missions as well. So another advantage of using AWS backups is your restore file capability. So you have variety of restore flexibility that you could actually use, which also includes backing up your virtual missions on-prem and restoring it to VMware Cloud on AWS or vice versa, 
You can also back up your virtual mission in one of the SDDC, which is the software defined data center uh, within a VMware Clara and AWS environment and restore it to another uh, software defined data center, which might be running in the different region or even the same region. What you could also do is you can take a backup uh, from the uh, VMware environment and restore it to native AC2 uh, virtual, virtual missions as well. That is awesome, Karthik. I love the fact that we are simplifying the operations for our customers and being able to apply the same policies across EC2, VMware workloads running on-prem and VMware Cloud uh, on AWS. So it's uh, great for them. Um, there have been some additional important enhancements made to the service recently. Uh, one I was particularly interested in was the Im improvements uh, around incremental backups and change block tracking. Uh, can you give us some more details about what's changed here? Sure, let's do that. Um, so with the uh, AWS backup, you know, uh, we actually have something called uh, uh, change block tracking, uh, which was which, which is actually a native uh, uh, native uh, feature with uh, the VADP kit that we use uh, for AWS backup uh, back for backing up uh, VMware virtual missions. So with this particular uh, CDK, we did not have 100% success. At times, you know, there were failures of the backups that's being taken uh, with the native VMware CBT. And that's the whole reason for us to come up with uh, uh, our own AWS backup uh, change block tracking. So talking about change block, uh, change block tracking and going in depth, uh, uh, in depth uh, into the change block tracking. So AWS backup has two backup uh, varieties. One is the full backup and another one is the incremental backup. So Whenever the change block tracking does not work fine, uh, we end up taking a full backup. So what that technically means is uh, we would need more bandwidth to copy the data over from uh, uh, the VMware environment to the uh, um, to the backup uh, storage plane. And also, storage plane will take more space than usual. So for example, let's say, you know, if you have a 10 terabyte virtual mission, uh, the first full backup is going to be a 10 terabyte. And if you do not have CBT working correctly or CBT enabled, um, so in that particular case, you know, the second backup will also be of 10 terabyte. But when you have CBT, we just track the changed blocks. So, and we copy over the change blocks and we call it the incremental backups. So, when we are depending upon just you know, one logic, which is uh, uh, VMS native CBT, uh, we have seen cases where um, the CBT uh, did not work as expected, you know, variety of reasons. So, we wanted to bring in another uh, step function to understand, okay, how we can, how we can ensure customers uh, do not uh, pay for, you know, more space and how we can make sure you know, customers have this additional functionality of uh, um, making sure that CBT is working fine. So that's why uh, we actually came up with uh, AWS uh, Backup's native CBT, where we compare the change block, even if the uh, VMware uh, native CBT fails. I think, Karthik, you know, it's great that we've got a very clear path and we've matured AWS back up now. We're, we're streamlining operations across it um, and continuing to make updates. Is, is there any other updates that have been made to the service over the past few months that we want to highlight? Oh, well, vSphere 8 support was uh, one of the major ones that we actually did. Uh, we introduced the support for uh, uh, vSphere, 8, uh, vSphere 8 as well. So prior to vSphere 8, we used to just support all vSphere 7. Now we have uh, vSphere 8 support. So that's another uh, major uh, announcement that came through. Fantastic. Um, I think we've really dived into how AWS Backup can help you provide almost an instant uh, capability around fast backup, incremental backups, easy restoration into VMware Cloud on AWS. Great to see the product is continuing to enhance. Um, where, do, where does everybody go to try and find out more information about AWS Backup and their VMware workloads? Uh, sure, you know, we, we have an AWS Backup product page where uh, most of the information uh, is available. And we do have some, a couple of you know, blog articles as well, you know, which explains uh, how to use uh, AWS Backup for VMware environment. And we also have some reference architectures to show you know, how the network can be set up uh, when AWS Backup is used for uh, VMware Cloud on AWS. 
So that's pretty simple and straightforward, to be honest. Uh, so when you when you actually go to the AWS backup service within the AWS console, uh, you will have the option to download the AWS backup gateway. You're just going to take that AWS backup gateway and deploy it into your vCenter. And once you deploy that to your vCenter, you'll register the backup gateway, set up your backup plans, and assign the virtual missions to those backup plans. Um, so you will have multiple options, right? You can you can go with the scheduled backup according to the backup plan, or what you could also do is uh, you could you can actually you know just uh, create an on-demand backup if that is required. And we, we can share you know some of the articles and uh, some of the uh, 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 documents on how to set it up. Uh, but as I mentioned, you know it's very easy to set it up and uh, uh, make sure you know uh, your virtual missions have the data protection. Oh, that is that is fantastic. Now, Karthik, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, for everybody watching, we'll have all the links uh, below in the description. Uh, appreciate your time, Karthik. Thanks, Karthik. Oh, well, thank you, guys. We've had a lot of updates recently to the VMware Cloud on AWS service, and with that is a new VMware Cloud Sizer. Joining us today on the show is Glenn from VMware to talk us through it. G'day, Glenn. How are you? Hey, gentlemen, how you doing? Great to uh, be with AWS once again. One of my favorite partners, if not the favorite. Thanks for joining us, mate. Um, if, uh, if our viewers haven't seen the VMware Cloud Sizer before, uh, could you give us a, a quick talk through it, Glenn? Uh, what is it and, and how do they go and use it? Yeah, absolutely. So VMware Cloud Sizer is a public utility that we have on the VMC portal. You don't have to have an account or anything to access it. It's just a public website, and it makes it easy to go ahead and run some predictive sizings, you know, just kind of experiment with various different workload inputs, maybe even provide some data-driven inputs, some, some uh, collections from an existing VMware environment. And we'll go ahead and run some estimations, do some maths for you on the back end, and tell you how many hosts it would take. And uh, there have been some improvements made to the sizer in recent months. Um, can you cover those for us, Glenn? What's, what's been happening since the beginning of the year? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, earlier this year, we had our 5.2 release. It was a massive update for us. It added in uh, the ability for us to do per VM placement with outlier detection. Previously, we would just average your workloads together to figure out how many hosts it would require. With the 5.2 release, we actually place each individual VM on an ESX host, so it's a much more accurate sizing. Uh, we also added the ability to exclude management overhead. So if you're doing a brownfield sizing where you're adding some workload to an existing deployment, we can go ahead and omit those management overheads uh, and just get a pure compute requirement calculation. Uh, and then we also uh, 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 enabled cluster level placement. So instead of just returning a generic host count, we now actually return actual clusters with VM placement on each individual cluster. So it was an absolutely massive update for us. Fantastic, mate. Um, you know, we've added support for I4I instances in there. Um, as we uh, continually, and as we walk through on this show, we're continually giving all the viewers uh, updates as to what we're doing around the VMware Cloud on AWS suite. Um, can you tell us what uh, what to look out for in the future around the, the sizing tool and what, what sort of features we're looking to incorporate? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, so we're constantly releasing. We we actually have have released. We released just last week. We fixed a uh, little bit of issue in CPU utilization calculation. But we have two major features that are coming out fairly soon. Uh, the first of which is going to be support for external storage. So you'll be able to get a mixed sizing now of what it would look like if you were to use vSAN and say FSx for NetApp on tap in conjunction with your SDDC. The sizer will go through and and run the calculations for you and then tell you how much data data would store on vSAN and how much would be hosted externally. It'll even help provide some estimates around data transferring fees if you're going to be using Transit Gateway in the deployment. Uh, and if we get a data-driven capture with something like Live Optics, we can even help you size FSx, telling you what your aggregate throughput and IOP requirements are going to be. Uh, so we're real excited to add that. Uh, and uh, as if that weren't enough, we also have a whole new sizing utility coming out, our host-based sizer. Uh, this is kind of a reverse sizer. Instead of us, you giving us a workload and us telling you how many hosts that workload would require, Require. You can instead, you'll be able to go to the utility, tell us how many hosts you want, and we'll just return back how many resources you'll get with that STDC. So just making it easy to do back of the napkin, you know, if rough sizings, if you know roughly what you think you want, uh, you don't have to go through and do those intense data collections. You can just kind of poke at the numbers and figure out what a three or four or six host cluster would, would actually provide. 
I think that's some really uh, exciting updates along with some of the ones you talked about from early this year. So those changes earlier this year around kind of turning off management workloads for clusters um, and, and sizing based on some larger VMs. Maybe you've got a memory hungry VM and where that might fit within individual hosts gives that real deep dive and gives customers more confidence with uh, what workloads they're going to um, run on which hosts and how what they're sizing. And then with those updates working backwards, if you want to kind of do a very uh, kind of rough sizing or a quick sizing and get an idea of what you can fit, then you've also got that capability. So some really exciting changes and, and improvements to the service. Um, if customers want to get started with uh, the VMware Cloud Sizer, uh, where do they go, Glenn? Just vmcsizer.vmware.com. Nice and simple. As you said earlier, <laughs> it's open to the public and it's a straightforward uh, to, to connect to. Um, so I think that just about wraps things up. Thanks for your time, Glenn. Thanks for joining us on the update show. Yeah, anytime. That just about wraps up our update show for this month. And uh, we've had some great updates we've talked through. And I've really enjoyed diving deep into AWS back backup with uh, Karthik and the VMC Cloud Sizer with Glenn. Thank you to Karthik and Glenn for joining us this month to talk about those updates. Uh, Michael, if our viewers want to get any more information or want to talk to us about migrating to the AWS Cloud with uh, VMware Cloud on AWS, um, what should they do? Yeah, we'll have all the links for everybody in the description below around uh, where to contact us, uh, how to get more information on AWS Backup, uh, as well as the VMware Cloud Sizer. Um, and with that, uh, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next month.